Hi, this is James at Laidback Cycles, and welcome to our maintenance clinic. So today we're going to show you basic things you should be doing at home, and secondarily, how to stay out of trouble once you're on the trail. So one thing cool about the trikes is there is not a whole lot of maintenance that you have to do to keep on running. Essentially, step one is to keep your tires inflated. This is very important on top of a trike. The trike pulls the tires sideways, which does not happen on top of a bike. So you want to keep this at an optimal inflation. And that depends on which package you have. Uh, most tires put it between 50 and 80 PSI, and you're fine. But you're going to want to find the maximum pressure rating on the tire. When people, we sell trikes to people based on their riding style and weight, the inflation might be at different pressures, and that's to accommodate the lower tire pressures, more comfortable ride, higher tire pressures, generally better handling, and more control and more speed. Most people end up right in the middle somewhere. So, you know, feel free to experiment with the tire pressures uh, to get your optimal ride. Step number two, watch your chain lube. General rule for lubrication on the chain is that you want to lubricate it about every 200 miles. Um, and you can do that, especially if you have a nice speedometer. Any lube will do, as long as you're using it. In most cases, you just run the chain back, put the lube, preferably on the inside of the chain, not on and above, but uh, on the inside in this area. One rotation every 200 miles is enough. If you find the drip bottle a little too messy, end up with too much of it on the floor, an applicator like this one works great. All you do is squeeze it a little bit, put the little applicator, and run a rotation. And that's it. That's all you have to do every 200 miles. Some of you will find, especially if you have the locking brake me mechanism, that your brakes loosen up over time like this one. Ideally, this should come back to the shop um, because a whole bunch of reasons. You could have worn brake pads, uh, your cables or your housings could be due for changing out. Uh, but in the meanwhile, these barrel adjusters, so looking at the barrel counterclockwise will tighten up the cable. So you can turn these cable housings until they get to where they need to. With the brake locks, generally you'll run them until they're just about tight and will no longer move. A little more. And that would be just about right. When you bring them into the shop, we go through the whole thing. We'll make sure that the, pad, the uh, pad distance is correct, the alignment of the pads are correct, uh, the cable pull, and everything. We generally don't like to see this when it leaves the shop. But for emergencies, you do what you have to do and you can get back to us. And normally it doesn't get this bad. We normally take care of this uh, at the one year tune up point, which is how often a trike should be coming back in. So the second thing that you may run into is if the shifting goes out. And the symptom to that is you will hear, oh, it doesn't want to go bad. That's a good trike. But that sound and that movement and that clicking, either front or back, is typically the sign that it needs to be brought in for adjustment also. The correct way to adjust it is to bring it all the way down, click up once, and then you're going to turn this barrel or the front barrel on some of the other trikes, but the, this one and most of the trikes we carry have a rear barrel on the derailleur, and you're going to turn this until the noise goes away. Um, you can use a stool or a bag or a box or anything to lift up the back while you're doing this. Uh, keep in mind that uh, this is going to be a quick home adjustment. This is another thing that's kind of a warning signal. It's letting you know that it's about time to bring the trike in, at least to let us take a look at it, or it's time to get a tune-up. Uh, one thing to be aware, if it's recently got a tune-up and it's beginning to go out of uh, adjustment, one of two things, either it's just breaking in again, especially if we change the cable housings and the cables, 
or there might have been some damage to the rear derailleur. Uh, this can happen uh, without you knowing it, especially if you transport it a lot, um, accidentally hit something. Uh, but it's uh, something that if it doesn't uh, adjust quickly, it's something we should take a look at. And lastly, keep it clean. Wash the trike down, um, car washing detergent, a little bit of uh, liquid soap, warm water. Do not use the jets and aim it because when you use a pressure washer, it will leach the lubrication right out of the bearings and cause premature wear. We never like to see that. So just um, wet it down, rag, sponge, what have you, same thing you use to wash your car with, rinse it all off, and that will do fine. Which moves us on to what most people are interested in. How to stay out of trouble when you're on the trail. Unfortunately, trouble finds you. Uh, the number one thing, flats. So, inside of your pack, there are a few things uh, you should have. Emergency kit. Small pump. Patches. And um, if you're really good, you'll have a spare tube, which is the easiest way to do it. But we're going to assume that we ran out of tubes for this demonstration. This is the sound nobody wants to hear. And this is the tire that most uh, often gets the uh, flats. This is the side of the road that all the debris tends to sit in, all the thorns, all the glass, and what have you. So, that does that. If you have a Presta valve, you want to remove this ring at this stage if it has it. Not all Presta valves have it. Uh, it holds the stem in place, but if you do, you want to remove it at this point. It's not 100% necessary, but uh, don't lose it. If you have good form and good hand strength, the tire lever goes underneath. Make sure you're not pinching the tube and pull it out. However, some tires are harder to pull off than others. Some people don't have the hand strength, especially as we get older, like myself. And in those cases, you are allowed to use two of these. But you have to be very careful that it's not pinching the tube. Uh, it's all black in there, so you won't be able to see. But ideally, this part of the tire lever should not be grabbing a tube. Carefully pull it over. Almost all tire levers have a little tail over here that allows you to lock one onto a spoke. And that makes it easier to pull this off. There you go. And then the tire can come off. So having an extra tube makes it easy because you don't have to hunt down the uh, hole in it. If you are one of those people who patch, um, you have an extra tube, you can patch it when you get it home. Otherwise, you have to patch it on the field. Uh, to do that, always fun. Oops. You're going to want to pump this up full of air. If you have a press the valve, you kind of want to close it because it makes it easy to make sure that you're not pressing against it. If you have a Schrader valve, which is the car type, you don't have to worry about anything. And then hunt down the hole. If it's a really small hole, it can be very hard to find. Um, those cases, you start going to extraordinary measures. In one instant, I actually used my water bottle and dip parts of the tube in there to find the hole. Where it bubbles up is where the hole is going to be and that allowed me to figure out where I needed to patch. Once you figure out where you need to patch, you let the air out, and then you break out your trusty patch kit. You'll need to rough up the area, and it, that cleans it out, but it also um, gets the tube ready to have this put on. People call it a glue, but it's actually a vulcanizing agent. What that means is, after you apply it, you have to make sure it's totally dry before you apply the patches. So, liberally, you'll see it. It will look like glue, but over a couple minutes, 
usually somewhere between two and five minutes, it'll become uh, dull as it absorbs into the tube. Once it absorbs into the tube, pull the foil off of that, press over it, and press down. Uh, once that's done, it's a permanent fix. Uh, it's not something temporary. People have asked me about um, these, really. These are the super glue or the um, glueless patches. These were initially designed for racers, but people still like them because they don't have to wait <laughs> for the glue to dry. Plus, for some reason, some people have never had luck with the glue. These allow you to just uh, scrape it down and put the patch over. But I find these are uh, a temporary fix, about a 50-50 chance of it holding long term. But this will get you home short term. So if you just want something to get you home, uh, glueless patches uh, will work for you. So getting it back in, the exact opposite. Um, a lot of mechanics don't do this step, but uh, if you haven't done a lot of uh, tube installations, I recommend you put a little bit of air into the tube. What that does is it gives us a little bit shape, and that, allow, that uh, makes it a lot less likely to pinch flat. And that's where this part of the tire gets caught between the tube, and when you inflate it, it pushes it up against the rim. Uh, that's not very fun. That works like a ticking time bomb. When it pinches it, it holds the air in until it loses just enough air and then you have another flat or if the tire pulls. So that allows us to get the tire in, tube into the tire and pull it over. Again, for people who don't have much hand strength, tire levers are allowed. You have to be very careful about this part where you pull the tire onto the rim and make sure that you do not catch the tube. If you catch the tube, you will put a hole in it. Once the tire is on, what we want to do is pull it over and make sure that there's no tube peeking out underneath. And there isn't. And this is where you want to put that piece that I said don't lose. and pump up your tire. So this type of pump is really the best ones. I can't really show it easily because I'm not on the ground, but this foot peg allows you to have a really good foot purchase. Um, and that makes it much, much easier to pump up the tire versus uh, this style that I'm trying to emulate. Some of the better pumps we have will also even have a gauge. So normally I'd spend another minute or two pumping up, but since this is a demonstration, I'm going to leave this where it is. And a second note on the small pumps, you don't want to be using this as a regular pump. These small pumps generate a lot of heat in use, uh, which means if you use this as your regular pump, uh, you'll probably burn it out within a year. You want to have a full floor pump which is what I'm going to use on this later on. And secondly, the back wheel. If you got a flat on the back wheel, you're not as lucky as if you got into front because the wheel does have to come out. The good news is, unlike a bicycle, when the wheel get back and gets lifted up to pull the wheel out, it's not going to tip over. You don't have to worry about anything here. Uh, it's fully supported. So undo the quick release. Pull this part of the derailleur back, that's called the knuckle, and gently pull it out. You can put a bag, a box, um, just about anything under there to hold it up. Um, you know, whatever you have will make it a little easier. So fixing this exactly the same as the front, except you have access to the whole wheel, is actually a little easier. Putting it back in, what we're going to do is we're going to take the chain, we're going to put it right onto the small gear here. So we're going to shift it to the lowest gear, put the gear cluster in the middle of the chain, and this is the part that messes up even some mechanics. And then once the chain is sitting on the small gear, loop it around and tighten the quick release. And that's all it is. For those of you not familiar with quick releases, 
which you should be, but if you're not, the quick release over here is a cam and lock system. It's got a screw on one side. So the way we do this is we pull this out 90 degrees, turn this until it's tightened within the trike frame, or even the bike if you need to put one on a bike, and close this up. This should have enough tension that it will leave a small little mark on your hand when it's closed. If it doesn't, it's probably too loose. If you can do this while it's still on the trike, uh, you're going to want to tighten it up. That's a very important safety thing. Again, inside of the chain. I think I tightened it up too much. And there we go. And that's how you take care of a flat on the field. The other thing that happens commonly when you're out on a ride that um, will strand you, doesn't happen often, thank goodness, but it's unpleasant when it does, is if you miss shift, something gets caught in the drivetrain and essentially damages a link in the chain. Usually it'll take one of these links and twist it left or right. The way we fix that is, Assuming we have, say, a p damaged piece over here, we're going to use a chain breaker. A chain breaker is available in these kits. So if you don't want to carry the full thing, most of us don't, uh, there'll be a chain breaker in the emergency kit. And all it is is a pin that pushes the chain pin out. So this is a demonstration of how that works. And it just comes out. You may have heard that you can push the pin back in. Uh, that was true on the five, six, seven, eight speed days. Uh, but increasingly as we put more gears in and made the chain thinner, uh, replacing that pin takes extraordinary skill. It's possible, but uh, it's much, much more reliable to use um, these uh, quick links. Uh, quick links, master links, they have a lot of names. And in this case, it's essentially a puzzle piece. Whoops. Let's not lose that. So because it's a new trike, I'm not going to go and pull the chain apart. <laughs> but essentially, let's say that I had a damaged area of link. I would remove it just like I did that one pin. I'd remove the other side uh, to remove that uh, damaged area. And then I join these two parts together. One of these goes on one side. The other one goes on the other side. And just like that, it goes together. So this is not completely done. It's uh, in place, but it's not snapped together. Uh, you can do that by pushing forward on top of the cranks, and that will snap it into place. Uh, sometimes you can do it with your hands. Um, if you have a pair of chain pliers, not everybody carries these. You can snap it into place while you're on the track. And that's how you get out of trouble with the chain. Keep in mind that because you're missing a link, you never want to go into the big, big gear combination. And you're going to want to get that fixed as soon as possible. Having the uh, correct amount of links is uh, pretty important on a trike.